everybody! My name is Skyth, and quite recently, Deltarune was finally updated to Chapter 2, and it is by far one of the most fun experiences I've had in a while. However, whilst playing through Chapter 2, I had a very strong urge to revisit Chapter 1 again, and while I was replaying through both chapters, I began thinking about one of the best aspects of this game, and that's how well it handles the boss fights. While Deltarune's wildly successful older sibling Undertale definitely has much more interesting bosses, the ones in Deltarune are by no means something to be overlooked. So today, I'm going to be ranking every boss in Deltarune chapters 1 and 2. The way I'll be ranking these bosses is based on how difficult they are, how enjoyable the fight is, how much I like the character overall, and how enjoyable their in-battle theme is. Now obviously these are all my own opinions, and you are more than welcome to disagree with me. And also, being as the second chapter of Deltarune is relatively new, I'm placing a spoiler warning right here. Obviously, covering the boss fights means I'm going to be talking about both the final bosses of the chapters, as well as each one's respective secret boss, but I'm pretty sure you already knew that. So with all of that out of the way, here is every single boss in Deltarune chapters 1 and 2, ranked from worst to best. Number 13, Rules Card Chapter 2. In my opinion, Rules is by far one of the most interesting fights out of any of these chapters. In order to win, you have to play the deadliest game in the world, Monopoly, taking turns to claim more houses than your opponent while also dodging rules card attacks. My main issue with this fight is not that it's too easy or that the character isn't interesting, rules is easily one of my favourite characters from the first chapter. The reason it's so low down on the list is because the fight is just not fun. Like any game of Monopoly, it's really easy to win if you know how to exploit the game, especially when you can claim three pieces at once and just completely block off rules within the first couple of turns. Meaning this really interesting concept barely lasts more than a few minutes at most. Number 12, Lancer Chapter 1. As the very first boss of the entire game, Lancer, as expected, barely puts up a fight. However, his incredibly fun demeanor, really enjoyable music, and a very joking nature really prevent him from being at the bottom of the list. His personality is really what carries him here, as his actual fight is barely even worth the two minutes it takes to kill him. While he is a nice introduction to the game overall and getting you used to how this chapter's going to work, there's really nothing here in this fight that's even remotely interesting. Number 11, Clover Chapter 1. And now onto a fight that's barely better than the last one. The fight against Clover was one I honestly wasn't expecting to enjoy. However, while I don't enjoy it now nearly as much as I did when the first chapter came out, the fight is still more enjoyable than some of the bosses before it. Clover's attacks overall, while slightly harder to dodge than Lancer's, are never really anything that can pose too much of a threat. However, something I enjoy about this fight is the fact that Clover's multiple personalities are really well displayed. Meaning sparing them is just a matter of catering to to what each respective head enjoys talking about. Again, however, what brings this fight down a lot is the sheer lack of difficulty, especially for a mid-chapter boss. Number 10, Sweet KK and Cap'n, Chapter 2. The very first three-on-three -three boss fight in either chapter is actually a really enjoyable one. Each character's attacks work really well with each other, and the music here is one of my favourites from the early parts of the chapter, as well as having one of the best endings to any boss battle we've seen throughout either chapter. Just watching Chris, Susie, and Rolse dancing along with Sweet KK and Cap into a really enjoyable beat with that adorable pose at the end really gave this trio a lot of personality. Again though, this fight suffers from just being way too easy, and unfortunately feels way too short to fully enjoy. As I after a couple of turns of distracting one of the bosses, the fight just ends with that really enjoyable dance sequence. I think my biggest problem with this one is admittedly the really awkward pacing combined with just how easy the fight is overall. Number 9, K-Round Chapter 1 Admittedly, this one is probably my guilty pleasure boss fight. K-Round is one of, if not the easiest boss in the entirety of the first chapter. However, his in-battle theme as well as his attacks being honestly really funny to watch unfold just means I can't hate this fight like I know a lot of other people do. Even in his refight towards the end of the chapter, the game still has a much more interesting way of taking him down, and I just find his really fun ways of attacking, combining with the interesting method needed to spare him, to make for one of the most enjoyable enjoyable fights in the first chapter of the game. As I said, this is much more of a guilty pleasure choice, because this fight is by no means any form of a challenge. It's just a fun, casual fight against a giant red checker piece with legs to rival Metaton, and I thoroughly enjoy every single encounter I have with this thing. 
Number 8, Birdly Chapter 2. Birdly is one of the most annoying and unintentionally hilarious characters to be added as a boss to the second chapter of Deltarune. And in almost every single boss fight you have with him, his personality is translated perfectly well. He's a snobby character with a perfect record in school. Ego, one of his attacks is throwing papers graded with A's at you. The rest of his attacks are also pretty interesting, and are actually the first ones in the entire chapter that I found even remotely difficult to avoid. Birdly also has the first actual on-screen death in the game. By taking the Snowgrave route, forcing Noel to basically freeze Birdly to death without a second thought, at which point he also doesn't wake up once you return to the real world. Birdly easily has the most personality put into his boss fights, and while he isn't the hardest enemy in the game, he's definitely one of the more enjoyable fights from Chapter 2. Number 7, Susie and Lancer, Chapter 1. While the original fight against Lancer was almost nothing short of a joke, the refight against both Susie and Lancer is actually a really enjoyable fight. While it doesn't last all too long and the actual difficulty still hasn't reached a point where the game is really challenging, the music combined with Susie's really interesting attacks working surprisingly well with Lancer's easily brings this fight high up on the list. This fight is actually one of the very few I'll look forward to whenever I replay Chapter 1. Despite it still being relatively easy, it's definitely one of the most enjoyable bosses in the first chapter. Number 6, Spanton Chapter 2. Spanton at first glance seems like a complete joke of a boss fight. Not only are his attacks relatively easy to dodge and simple to predict, but he doesn't even seemingly want to hurt you, being as he literally gives you a free heal during the fight. However, his unorthodox attacking methods and his theme being really catchy makes him an incredibly enjoyable fight. His methods of attacking by distorting the battle box itself and sending out smaller versions of his own head to attack you really make this one of the crazier and out there fights so far. And honestly, Honestly, much like K-Round, this fight is one of my guilty pleasure ones. It is definitely not a challenging boss battle, but is much harder than some of the previous fights in the game, and is still wildly enjoyable every time I play through the chapter. Number 5, The King, Chapter 1. What was originally a surprisingly underwhelming fight the first time through has become one of my favourites from Chapter 1. Barring one other entry from the first chapter, the King was the only encounter to give me a run for my money. His attacks are a fair amount faster and last a lot longer than most other enemies along with obviously doing much more damage. His in-battle theme, while not particularly notable, is definitely enjoyable. And overall, his methods of attacking as well as his rumoured presence throughout the chapter really carry the weight of this boss fight as a whole. Number 4, Giga Queen Chapter 2 When I originally played through Deltarune's second chapter, I fully expected the fight against the Queen to be very similar to the fight against the King. However, I was very happy to discover that that isn't the case. The Queen's final phase and subsequently the final boss of Chapter 2's neutral route is a really enjoyable fight, taking that one really interesting minigame from earlier in the chapter and bringing it fully to life in a huge mecha robot encounter. The fight itself is actually quite a bit of a challenge, especially when working in dodging both the huge bosses attacks as well as the much tighter soul attacks making for an incredibly intense final boss fight adding on to the fact that this is easily my second favorite theme in the entirety of chapter 2 making the giga queen fight a spectacle of foreshadowing to behold one that definitely usurped all of my expectations and managed to make it to the top five however i feel like once you get the patterns down the queen fight can be just a little bit too easy however that definitely isn't the case for the next fight Number 3, Birdly and the Queen, Chapter 2. While I do really enjoy the second phase of the Queen fight, her first phase, at least for me, is much more enjoyable. The Queen's battle mainly involves you trying to disorientate her whilst attempting to free Birdly, and the fight can actually be a challenge if you aren't paying attention. She'll use Birdly's attacks against his will and will even create a shield for herself that you have to dismantle before you can free Birdly. This fight also has one of my favourite themes in the entire chapter. Not the best overall, but still a very enjoyable one to listen to. The fight does end rather abruptly after Birdly's freed, but that doesn't take away from the fact that my expectations were wildly outclassed for this really enjoyable fight. Number 2, Jevil Chapter 1. Now, this may come as a surprise to absolutely no one. Jevil is by far the best boss in the first chapter of Deltarune. He is the only boss who never lets up the entire fight, and it feels like pure bullshit bullet hell, and I absolutely love it. Jevil also happens to be one of the few bosses to constantly barrage you with everything under the sun in an incredibly short amount of time, along with an insane final attack that blows everything out of the water. Jevil's music is also damn near perfect, and despite only being on screen for this one fight alone, his presence is known throughout chapter 1 somehow even more so than the king himself. His ridiculously bullshit attacks, combined with some amazing music and his literal no fucks given attitude, means he is by far the best boss in that part of the game. However, there is one more boss that managed to beat him. And number one...
Spam to Neo, Chapter 2. By far the best boss in either current chapter is the secret final boss of Chapter 2, Spam to Neo. The wacky and weird attacks from his much weaker state are ramped up to 11 here. His unorthodox methods of attacking and crazed state make him an absolute beast when it comes to dealing damage. And the fact that you can enrage him further to make his fight way harder to beat only adds to how good this fight is. Not only that, but this guy also happens to be the real final boss of the Snowgrave group which combined with everything else adds on to the fact that you'll only have one party member, making this by far the hardest fight in the game. What I really love about this fight is how this is basically the Metaton Neo encounter we were teased at from the genocide route of Undertale, being as this fight also uses the yellow soul mechanic, and in fact is, at least currently, the only fight in the entire game to use a different soul. And it's wonderful to see. Spanta Neo's amazing theme, crazy attacks, magnificent fight overall, and brilliant personality easily make him the best boss in the current build of Deltarune, no matter which route you decide to take. So that is going to bring us to the end of the video. Obviously, as I said, these are all just my own opinions, so be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. With all that said, if you enjoyed this video even a little bit, then be sure to drop a like on it, and if you're new to the channel, first of all, welcome, and second, why not subscribe and hit that notification bell too? It's free and it helps out a ton. Lastly, if you want to see more of me on other social media platforms, then you can find links to all my other corners of the internet down in the description. Once again, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, stay safe everyone, peace.